Hey, what's up everybody? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. Gonna hop back on the Apple train here, but you soundbar people are making it really difficult. Uh, there we go. So yeah, you can probably see I have a brand new Intel iMac. I think the box shape kind of gives it away, you know, and the title of the video. I'm not naive, I know this is far from the sexiest product. Though I would be derelict in my duty as a tech YouTuber if I did not make a video of it, right? I get my license revoked. Why are you still in your box? Let's open it up, shall we? Nearly six years ago, I quite gleefully plopped down a few grand for the first Retina iMac. The first iMac I've ever purchased. Retina still kind of held some cloud at the time, at least for computer screens that were just starting to get the 4K, much less 5K treatment. Just knowing that my monitor had 16 times the pixel count of my parents' 720p TV made me feel like I really made it, like I was superior to them in some fundamental way. It was exciting, okay? Just trust me, if you weren't born yet. For most of the life of this computer, my 2014 iMac was primarily used to help develop my Rubik's Cube solving apps. While these apps are highly sophisticated, it never really demanded a beefed up computer. It was adequate, and the idea of getting another iMac that was not all that different was never enough to draw me to upgrade. Instead, I opted to keep my MacBooks fresh and invest in iPad Pros to extend not so much deep in or bolster available computing power. So about six months ago, I got this full-hearted idea to start a YouTube channel and take it kind of seriously. For you free time. Anyway, YouTube channels involve editing videos. And what do you know, neither my six-year-old computer nor my 2018 MacBook Pro was really all that super deft at processing and pumping out 4K video. They didn't really shine in that department, a little laggy, a little crashy to say the least. At the end of the day, I need Xcode and I do prefer Final Cut Pro when it's not crashing. Kind of invested in a lot of plugins to assist with my magic desk here. And I leverage ecosystem technologies like AirDrop and iCloud quite heavily. So I'll be sticking with a Mac, hopelessly entrenched, but all good if needs are being met. I've been holding my breath with my hands reached out for a new iMac, knowing perhaps amongst the worst purchases of all time would be the 2019 iMac in mid-2020. They'll create Netflix documentaries about those people. <laughs> I don't want to be in that documentary. Some might rightfully argue that buying this iMac is the second worst buying decision this year, given the looming ARM iMac release rumored as soon as the end of the year. So why not buy other Macs? MacBook Pros are underpowered for the price, Plus, I only have full-size screens up when editing videos, so not concerned about portability. And I'm not into external GPUs, which are kind of loud. Adequate, but not quite the powerhouse you might imagine. iMac Pros are a bit pricey and have been stagnant since 2017, clearly on their way out. Maybe there's a case to buy a used one, but I want a new thing. The Mac Pro, well, it would be great, but I don't want to delay retirement. The iMac, as far as I can figure, is the best power to monitor to dollar proposition at this very moment. And I kinda need a really good Mac at this very moment. Well, I got it all undressed. By all practical standards, the exact same shell and bezelvania as 2012, and oh so fresh. You can stuff this geezer frame with some seriously uppish end computing stuff. We'll get into it. Wait, what is this? 128 gigabytes of RAM? Why didn't I order that amount of RAM in my iMac? It would have cost me $2,600 more than the base 8 gigabyte option? Well, how much is that RAM? $600? Oh, so just $2,000 cheaper? Well, how am I going to get it into the Mac? It can't be that easy. Do I have to disassemble the whole thing? Oh, it's really easy. Just pop open the back, levitate the existing RAM, pull the RAM out, and then replace with labels facing away from you. Make sure the new RAM is locked into place and put the diaper back on. Well, I figured that was at least $2,000 worth of work. If not illegal, certainly morally egregious, Apple. So does my computer still work? Started right up. Let's check the RAM status. Looking good, 128 gigabytes. Find a link to this RAM in the description. Anyway, maybe this is a bit indulgent, cathartic, but I think it would be fun to have my two iMacs fight. I never get upgrades this big as so much of my toys are updated every iteration, iPhones, headphones, iPads. I typically need to squint a little to see the upgrade. I don't wanna get into the psychology of this, but my upgrades honestly mostly serve to just quiet the voices telling me my thing 
is not the newest thing. It's very healthy. This upgrade is refreshingly not that. My 2020 iMac is nearly fully specced, save the storage, where I opted for two terabytes instead of eight terabytes of storage. I paid an extra $600, which is an unbelievable ripoff, but my aim is to be able to complete a project on the SSD before offloading it. I prefer not to have to run my active project off an external drive. The geezer over here got the best processor available, which was a quad-core Gen 4 Core i7, mid-level graphics, so four gigabytes instead of eight, and mid-capacity memory, 16 gigabytes instead of 32. Also upper mid-level storage, so 500 gigabytes of SSD. The max storage at the time was one terabyte SSD. Nonetheless, thought it might be fun to outline how much the 27 inch Retina iMac has changed while staying the same for so long. I'm guessing, but I suspect a rather small minority goes about updating their iMac every year. Maybe there are some of you out there with a 2014 ish iMac, just barely hanging on like me who are thinking of going all in on the newest, baddest iMac. And perhaps you need a refresher on what has changed over the years, not just in the last year. Maybe you're considering a 2020 Intel iMac because you're just not convinced the ARM iMacs are for you, at least initially. Throw down the scoreboard. I might be making a mockery of my already much embattled scoreboard system. We're going down together. All right, let's run down the differences between the first Retina iMac to the last Intel iMac. I'll do my best to provide model year introductory dates. Most of the changes, fortunately, are not subject to customization, so everyone gets them. And then the storage, memory, CPU, GPU performance differences at the end. Size and weight, they're the same size, but the 2014 is a pound more than the 2020. There is some nerdy iMac trivia for you, a point for 2020. Swivel, it's exactly the same, though I suspect the older one wished it had stretched a little more. Oh. I have to say, Apple has kept it a little old school with the ports. Apple continues to condone the plugging in of an analog cord right into their iMacs. The disappearing headphone jack gets another year of life. Or maybe just a few more months. I don't know how we're calculating this. But really, how much of a dick move would it be if Apple removed the headphone jack from this design? Could have been an epic troll, Apple. Maybe you're not as brave as you say you are. Since 2014, the iMac has traded the two Thunderbolt 2s for Thunderbolt 3s with USB-C technology, introduced in 2017. I think we can safely say the Thunderbolt 3 USB combo ports are a bit more capable. It can charge your stuff, act as an interface to more intensive external hardware from GPUs to 6K monitors, and USB-C is generally the connection modern consumer electronics devices are migrating to, helping you to avoid embarrassing adapters like this. Twenty twenty taking an early demanding lead. Who would have predicted that? Each model still has the four old timey USB three ports, which are nice to have as the transition away from these is not yet complete. The twenty twenty iMac got an upgrade to a UHS two card reader. Well, this means you can get those family vacation slideshows up and running three times faster if you have a UHS two compatible SD card. It's pretty easy to identify these cards. Look for the Roman numeral two or multiple interface strips on the card itself. The new iMac can read both of those rows. Killing it. The 2020 iMac is really starting to run away with this. Which one tells the better dad jokes? 2014 is on the board. With your new iMac, you get the Magic Mouse 2 and the Magic Keyboard 2, which are largely the same as the originals. I think I remember some sort of ceremony where I torched the Magic Mouse 1, so I don't have that. The Magic Mouse 2, unlike the Magic Mouse 1, is rechargeable, but Apple continues to buck conventional thought that mouse charging should not be placed on the bottom of the mouse, as it tends to interfere with mousing. It's all good, you can barely even notice. The Magic Keyboard 2 is also rechargeable and loses the tube on the top as it doesn't need to hold 18 two AA batteries. The Magic Mouse 2, however, can still transition seamlessly from mouse to knife in a blink of an eye. The screen. I didn't go for the new nano texture option. Additional changes from the 2014 include P3 wide color gamut, introduced in 2015, so better color support, and the 2020 iMac finally got True Tone, 
that feature on your iPhone that adjusts screen color to complement the ambient light. I'm a pretty big fan. Everything considered, the 2020 iMac definitely comes out on top with better screen technology. The 2020 iMac finally gets Bluetooth 5. Expect faster connectivity, faster data transfer, and more range with other Bluetooth 5 compatible devices. The 2020 iMac is a latecomer, but finally gets its T2 chip. This is a specialized chip that does lots of cool stuff. Enables secure boot, you get Hey Siri, face detection, improved audio like variable EQ, improved skin tone mapping, faster video decoding. The T2 definitely adds to overall refinement and speed of the system. The 2014 iMac is really kind of fuzzy on what any of that stuff is. The 2020 iMac finally got a 1080p FaceTime camera. Supposedly the improved image will shield you from ostracism on your Zoom or FaceTime calls. It's not even close. You do deserve to be publicly shamed bringing it with that video. On top of looking better, you will sound better as you go from one minimum effort mic to a studio quality three mic array. Why do gorillas have big nostrils? They have big fingers. Why should you be careful when it's raining cats and dogs? You might step in a poodle. Can you tell which one is which? I hope so, I paid a lot of money. <laughs> Not many people know this, but the 2014 iMac can grow a more robust beard. Oh. One enhancement I'm excited about is sidecar support. The option to use your iPad Pro as a secondary screen. Sidecar compatibility was retroactively applied to 2015 and newer iMacs when released in 2018. I'm snub no longer. I'm not really in the mood to spout a bunch of numbers, so I'll just show the configurables here. You can pause if needed. You can see how these two computers are contented, as well as the base and max options for processors, GPUs, memory, and storage. The iMac 2020 highlights include the option to upgrade to Intel's 10th gen Core i9 10 core processor. For the GPU in 2020, you get the AMD Radeon Pro Graphics 5000 series built on seven nanometer architecture. The highest tier card supports 16 gigabytes of memory. Since 2014, eight gigabytes has been the limit. 2020 is also the first year to support GDDR6. Last but not least, in 2020, Apple finally killed the Fusion Drive and raised the ceiling on SSD storage from two terabytes to eight gigabytes. Let's skip over to Geekbench. The two iMacs yielded similar scores on the single core test, but the 2020 routed the 2014 on the multi-core. You know, having six more of them. The Geekbench graphics scores are about twice as high on the 2020 than on the 2014. Export time on my 4K eight minute video riddled with plugins and layers was five minutes on the 2020 iMac and around 10 minutes on the 2014. To be honest, I was expecting much more of a boost on this kind of task, but these two times matched almost exactly the graphics Geekbench score differences. 10,000 foot level, it's still a huge upgrade for me. Should help me get my vids on the tube a bit faster. Maybe I'll get 15 minutes more sleep here and there on the longer videos. There is no question that even though these two iMacs look the same, the iMac has received not spectacular, but quality improvements over time. Where the 2014 iMac has been torturous, the 2020 iMac thus far has been a pleasure to use. The difference in fluidity is clear when opening apps, scrubbing through video, playing games. Important to me, fewer spinning beach balls and application crashes that often force me to restart my computer to get the application running again. Final cut. So much time wasted with this thing. I have little time. What I can save is really valuable. All this being said, I'm still torn about keeping it. I'm quite certain it will serve me well for at least half a decade, but I would kind of be shutting the door on what the future may hold. What's that movie when two stormy lovers finally connect in the end just to learn it's a little too late? Some of that energy is happening here. I have little doubt that many of the conveniences like headphone jacks, card readers, USB 3 ports will be jettisoned. Meanwhile, you're thinking the stupid old iMac would be working just fine here. There's always an early adopter cost to worry about. Long term, however, ARM is probably the way iMacs need to go to find that next tier of style, ecosystem integration, dominated by iOS and iPad OS, and performance. I don't want to say straight out, don't buy this. If you're an iMac fan in its current iteration, you will be quite pleased with its performance, I suspect. You just may be a little sad seeing the future happen without you. You'll very quickly be sitting on the sidelines when that next iMac that Apple actually really cares about is dazzling everyone and turning the page on your still very new computer. Anyway, hope you got something out of this. 
Don't forget to feed the algorithm monster if this video was your speed. Gonna wrap this up, catch you on the next one.